Hello guys and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, extra welcome to you. Today I'm going to show you how to make some super simple dill pickles. This is a recipe that I have been using for years and years. So, so easy, doesn't require a lot of ingredients and the pickles, my kids and my husband both agree, taste very close to the pickles at Firehouse Subs. So if you like those tops of dill pickles, then hang tight, grab some canning jars, and I'll show you how it's done. So I'm just gonna let these soak here for just a second. This is just a little bit of vinegar and water, and I'm gonna rub each cucumber as they soak and get clean just to make sure that all the little pricklies are rubbed off here. Nobody wants a prickly pickle, so, <laughs> so make sure that you do that. The ingredients for these pickles is super, super easy. I just always pick up a bag of pickling and canning salt. Now, you don't have to use pickling and canning salt. However, you wanna make sure that you have a really good um, sea salt you do not want any of like the caking agent in it so if you just get morton salt that's not going to work for you so that's why i always just pick up just a bag of pickling salt it's very inexpensive and it's just the right kind of salt that you need the next thing you're going to need is some cloves of garlic so i grab that and then some fresh dill out of the garden if you don't have any sometimes you can get it from the grocery store like fresh dill like this I would not use dried dill in pickles. Um, you can buy the packets at the store of just like pickling spices and stuff like that, but I don't use those. We really like pickles this way. So find some fresh dill, whether it's from a friend or from the store or whatever, or from your own garden, hopefully. <laughs> and then you want both, both tops, okay? So you want the heads, which is this, okay? And then you also want like the leaf, the leafy part, I guess is what you would call it. I use both in mine. They have different flavor qualities, so that's why I like them both. The other thing that you're gonna need is a really good just distilled white vinegar. And then of course, lots and lots of cucumbers. And that's really the only ingredients in this. So like I said, you can add pickling spices to it if you want to but this is really all you need for a really good dill pickle. So silly me, I completely forgot to add that there's also water in this, of course, so make sure that you have that too. Okay, so to get started, we are gonna make our brine. So I have eight and a half cups of water in here, and then this is just a little over two cups of white vinegar. So then I'm going to put a half a cup of the pickling salt and then we're going to move it over to the stove just to let everything mix in really good and dissolve. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the first jar for you guys just to show you what you're going to do. So I think all of these, let's see, maybe I'll do these because it seems like there's more pickles this size. So all of these are around the same size right here. There we go. All of these are around the same size, so I'm gonna start with these. But before I start slicing them, I'm gonna go ahead and put a clove of garlic in the bottom of this, a head of dill, and then a few little sprigs of dill in the bottom before I start slicing up these cucumbers. Because as I slice them, I like to start packing them in there so I can make sure that I know how many to put it in. that you are going to need. 
Um, this is a water bath canner. You can use a pressure canner just without using the pressure. If you just set the lid on there and you don't lock it into place, you can use that. In fact, when I first started out canning, I didn't even have a pressure canner or a water bath canner. I actually just had a really big, deep stock pot. And you can definitely use that, especially if you have one of these things that fits down in it. However, I didn't even have a jar lifter. Um, I didn't even have a jar lifter for mine. So I did a little trick. I'll show you in just a little bit, a little trick that I used to do when I would can with just my stock pot and no jar lifter. So you don't even have to have this equipment, but this is a water bath canner because of the acidity in the pickles, you don't need to pressure can. You're only going to water bath these for 15 minutes. So this is super, super quick guys. You don't wanna do it for more than 15 minutes because that can make your pickles kinda of yucky and soft and um, just not very good. You want them to kinda of stay crispy. Now I do not use pickle crisp in mine, you can. I have never used it and I haven't really had an issue. My pickles still have a pretty good snap especially if I make them fresh from fresh cucumbers. So, all that to say, you will need a water bath canner. So I have mine filled up pretty far. It's a little bit rusty in the bottom, I just noticed that. I have it filled up pretty far and I'm gonna let this come to a pretty good rolling boil and I'm gonna get my jars ready while this is sitting here and starting to heat up. It's not even, oh, it's starting to get warm a little bit on the bottom, anyway. So this will probably be a little while, but that'll give me time to stuff all of my jars. So real quick, I wanna jump in again and let you guys know, I forgot to tell you about this stuff, but you need to wash your jar lids and you need to make sure the lids are brand new. All right, so something else I'm gonna show you here is just these little nifty tools. So this is good for checking your headspace at the top and for pickles you wanna have a half inch headspace between the brine and the lid. So that's what that's for. And it also, you use the opposite side to push down in there to make sure there are no bubbles once you put the brine in. The next thing is this little nifty thing. And this is a magnet, has a magnet on the bottom. This is your jar lifter. What you use this for is you come over here and it just lifts these out of the warm water because this is activating the, the seal on the top of the jars. So that's why these are sitting in really warm water over here on the stove. So here in just a second, I'll show you what you do. But, the other thing that comes with the little starter set is this nifty funnel that you set down in there. So I still use it to pour the brine down in there even though it doesn't feel really good because there's pickles there. But all that to say, this is going to keep the brine from going everywhere. And I have used just a regular funnel before too, but this just works so much better. I use a ladle. And I'm just going to ladle the brine in there until it gets to about a half inch from the top. And I am almost there. Okay. And there you have it. There it is. Okay. So it's a little bit, those poke up a little bit out of it, but that's fine. I've never had an issue with that. So by the way, I do want to add, so what I did is I put a head, a sprig, and a clove in the bottom, a clove of garlic, and then when I finished packing them on the top, I put another clove, a sprig of dill, again, like a bunch sprig of dill, and then um, another little dill head inside on top. So now that you do that, I am going to wipe down the top, because you don't want to have anything around where your seal is going to be. So you want to do that. Then I'm gonna go over here and grab this. You wanna make sure that's sitting right there on top. 
Then you're going to put your ring around it. It's okay if it moves a little bit as long as it's not coming off of the top. Okay, so you don't, you just want to do it fingertip tight. You don't want to do it so tight that you're like, Ew. so just fingertip tight. Um, and so I'm going to finish filling all of these and then show you what to do next. Once you get all of your jars loaded in, you want to lower them down in there and make sure that the water is covering them by about one inch and then you're going to put the lid on and process for 15 minutes. Alright, so these are done. I'm going to let it stop boiling and when it does, I'm going to pull these suckers out and then we're going to wait for the wonderful sound that is music to every canner's ears and that is the popping of the lids. Here it goes. All right, so earlier I mentioned that you don't actually have to have a canner in order to do this, but you do need something to lift your cans up off of the bottom. So one of the ways that I used to get around this when I was really new to canning and I didn't have all the equipment was like I said, I used to use just a really deep stock pot with a lid. It worked beautifully. However, in order to make something to keep it up off of the bottom so that there's airflow for all the boiling water that's going on is you need some aluminum foil and I'll show you what to do next. So my husband was just making fun of me because <laughs> because I, he said, it's funny you used to have to do it that way. No, it is kind of funny, but this is a really neat little trick. Okay, so I just pulled off a really long thing of aluminum foil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold it. There is no like exact science to this. I'm gonna keep it like that. Then I'm gonna do another one that way. Okay, so I'm gonna take these and I'm going to bend them together so that they're nice and thick and extra long. Okay, whoops, it's coming apart. Okay, then I'm gonna bend them the other way so that it'll kinda help keep it together. And it's nice and thick. All right, next, I'm gonna connect them. And then I'm gonna kinda start rolling them around like this. Okay, so it's nice and thick. Now, if you want to, if it makes you feel better, you can do another layer like that. But the next thing that you're gonna do, we're gonna pull off some more. Do the same kind of thing. And you're gonna make a diameter to this circle here. Look. See, we're doing math and everything in this video, guys. All right, so this is what you're going with so far. Then you're gonna do it one more time. Looks hilarious, but I'm telling you, it works. And you do what you have to do if you wanna get some pickles cleaned. And I used to do jelly this way. I would can pickles, jelly, um, salsa. What else did I used to do, John? I don't even remember. Easy stuff. <laughs> Hot acidity stuff. All right, so there you go. Looky there. And you can go through there again um, just to make sure that your jars don't slip through. Um, actually, let me do that one more time just to show you guys. 
and it really did. It would lift the jars. It lifts your jars just enough to let those bubbles come up through there. Okay, and so you would want to do one more across there. So what I would do is I would do it all on the same side so that when you flipped it this way, it would lift everything up off, off of the bottom of the pot. If you don't have the canning equipment, you can still do it. It works. I did it that way for a few years. So anyway, just thought I'd add that little tip in there. Thank you guys so much. I hope this was helpful to you guys. And I hope that you try this pickle recipe and I hope you like it. Now, one thing I wanna add, you wanna wait to eat these things until at least two weeks. You want them to sit in that brine and, that, and let those flavors mix and all that kind of stuff. So do not eat these pickles until at least two weeks, okay? Thanks so much, guys, and have a great day.